Howdy, neighbor. Welcome to the Good News Program. I'm your host, Mike Vaughn, and I'm so glad and happy that you've tuned in today. As I say many times, I know you could be watching anything else. You could be listening to anything else. I realize that, and it blesses my heart to know you take this few moments out of your day or whenever you watch or listen to this program uh, to, uh, with me. And so I just want to thank you so much for doing that. And I'm going to continue sharing on the program today about what the gospel means. What does the word gospel truly mean? And I shared to some on the last program about how that it means good news. The word itself means good news. And uh, that's uh, how we have entitled our program, Good News Program, because it's all about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to continue sharing that with you today. And also, I'm going to share a song with you entitled, Get Up in Jesus' Name. I tell you what, this is a song that will really make you get up and get to going. So shout the victory as I sing this song. And I'll be back after that to share this message with you. Stay tuned. Get caught beautiful there laid out on the street A poor and lowly beggar He was crippled in his feet As John and Peter passed him They saw his need was bad They had no gold and silver But they gave him what they had So get up, get up Get up in Jesus' name The Lord he's calling daily For those who Say, don't go down defeated. Victory's yours to claim. So get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the days in which we live, there's evil everywhere. The soul that gets discouraged, it may feel tormenting fear. But God is calling soldiers just to get out of the pier. Take hold of the power that John and Peter knew. So get up, get up, get up in Jesus' name. The Lord, he's calling daily for those who will be saved. Don't go down defeated. Victory's yours to claim. Praise the Lord, friend. I hope you've enjoyed that song. And I want to share with you today a little bit more from my heart what I've been talking about, about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does the gospel really mean? Well, uh, in, in many Bibles, like the King James, the New King James, that word is still used, gospel, and simply means good news. It's a Greek word that means good news. And so... That's the command of the Lord Jesus Christ to the church today. 
is to go into all the world. That's what Mark 16, 15 says. Go into all the world and preach or to proclaim the good news to every creature. So the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is all born again believers all over the world, we have a command of the Lord. We shouldn't have any question, you know, what should I be doing? You know, I've even heard Christians say before, they've, they've said things like, well, you know, I, I just, I, I feel like there's something I need to be doing, you know. Uh, I need to be doing something for the Lord, but I'm not sure what it is. Well, that's one of the main things that we all need to be doing is making sure that those that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ can hear the gospel message. Now, uh, there's many different ways you can do that. Uh, you can, uh, uh, if God has called you to be an evangelist, you know, there's, there's different things you can do or a pastor. But uh, God's not called everybody to be uh, uh, one of the five-fold ministry is what we call. But we can all witness about the good news. We can all witness to others. And so we all ought to be witnessing to others. And uh, if it's not doing it ourselves, we can be helping someone else. Whenever you pray for this ministry, this television ministry right here, you are doing something to get the good news out there. When you send a financial donation into this ministry to help us pay for our airtime, you're doing something to get the good news out there. When you give somebody a gospel track, you hand them a track, you're doing something to share the good news. So you see, there's many different ways that you can do that. You don't actually have to go yourself, but when you send somebody else, it's just like you going yourself. And uh, so many different ways you can do it, but it's about getting the good news out there. Now, what is the good news? And I know I'll be repeating myself on some of these things, but I'm doing this for a reason. I believe it's very important because we have so many voices in the world today that the message of the gospel seems to kind of get pushed in the corner. And God is laying it on my heart to declare it loud and clear of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is the gospel? Well, the Apostle Paul, let's let him answer that because he wrote two-thirds in the New Testament and he was called by God to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Now, he preached to Jews as well, yes, but he also was sent to the Gentiles and uh, he is called the apostle to the Gentiles. And look here what he said in 1 Corinthians 15 in chapter 1 through 6. I know I shared it with you last time, but I want to read this again. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you. Did you hear that? He said, I'm declaring to you, I'm telling you the gospel. Now, what's the word gospel mean? That's right. Good news. I'm telling you the good news which I preached to you which also you received and in which you stand. So thank God that in context, of course, he's talking to the church at Corinth here. And they had received the good news that he already shared with them. And he said that they're standing fast in that. And verse 2 says, by which also you are saved. So you see, that good news message brought salvation into their lives. Notice that, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. Now notice that. The Apostle Paul said, I'm just telling you what I received myself. In other words, I wouldn't tell you something that I hadn't received or I hadn't done myself. Well, when did the Apostle Paul receive it? On the road to Damascus. That's right. Yeah, you remember that? When he was going to Damascus and he was Saul before he was Paul, of course. His name was Saul of Tarsus. And he was going to Damascus to do what? To arrest Christians. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yep, Christianity was being outlawed during that time. And uh, he was one of them that went and arrested them and brought them into prison. And that's exactly what he was on his way to do. But on the way, he run into Jesus. Amen. A great light 
shined uh, upon him, the Bible says, so much so that it blinded him and it, uh, and it knocked him off of his beast. He was probably on a horse. And I mean, it, it knocked him on his backside. And, uh, and he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then after that, other scriptures tells us that he went into the desert of Arabia for three and a half years. And uh, what did he do there, you reckon? Well, he sought the face of God. He sought after the Lord. And that's where he, he received uh, the revelation knowledge that he went out and he proclaimed and he shared with others. And so he's saying, look, I'm just sharing with you what I already received. And I like that. I deliver to you, verse 3, first of all, that which I also received. Now, notice he's going to get specific with it here. He says, this is what I received. That, you know, in other words, this is the revelation knowledge I received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Now, did he believe that before? No. <laughs> he didn't believe that before. He, he was wanting to kill Christians before. And uh, he didn't believe that Jesus was the true Messiah. He was like a lot of the other uh, Sanhedrin and the Jewish Christians. They believed that Jesus was an imposter. And uh, that's why they uh, hung him up on a cross and crucified him. But now he's saying that he believes in Jesus as the Messiah. And, and notice again, he said that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. What's the gospel? That's it right there. I'm just going to let that kind of hang there a little bit. Because you see, too many times we get in too big a hurry, and we miss things. The gospel, in a nutshell, Paul tells us right here, is that Jesus died, and that He was buried, and that He rose Again, three main points, really, of the gospel. Jesus died. Now, if you would say, well, Jesus died, that's the gospel right there. Well, almost. <laughs> well, you've got to realize, what did he die for? You see, I, I, I want to take my time and just park here a little bit, if it's all right with you. He, there was a lot of people that died. Even on the very day that Jesus was crucified, there were other men that died on, on that hill of Golgotha or the hill of Calvary, whatever you want to call it, where, uh, where Jesus was crucified. There were other men there, but you, you know, that didn't do us any good. And even days before that and days after that, a whole lot of men were crucified. That didn't do us any good, did it? No. No, it was the fact that Jesus died for our sins. See, that's the gospel right there. So then that tells me, aha, sin is the problem. And that's what a lot of people do not want to address today, that sin is the problem. All of the, the, the evil, all of the, uh, the bad news, or most of the bad news, and all of the evil in the world today is really... Uh, the root of it is sin. It's because of sin and because of mankind going their own way, living their own way away from God. Now, this brings me to, to my next point here. I'm going to go a little different route than I did uh, last week. One must first see and understand the sin problem before they can really see the goodness of the good news. Because sin is, number one, the problem because sin separates us from God. This is why you need Jesus, because he did something about the sin problem. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's all right. Isaiah 59, 2 says, but your iniquities have separated you from God. What has? Your iniquities. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Now, question, who is separated from God? Everyone. Because we were all born in sin. We're all sinners. See, every, everyone that's born 
is born in sin. Another way you could say it is they're born with the, the, the nature of Adam, that Adamic nature. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, I mentioned Adam. That's right. It was Adam and Eve's fault to begin with because they are the first ones that sinned. And the Bible says in Romans 5 and verse 12, when they sinned, death came upon the whole human race. So if somebody said whenever they get to heaven, they got a bone to pick with Adam. Uh-huh, because they the one that started it all. Amen. That's right. They started it. They, this sin problem Adam and Eve started it all, but thank God Jesus did something about it. The Bible says he came as the last Adam and gave his life for the world. And through him, we can have forgiveness and eternal life. Amen. Now, I, I want to look at this Romans. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to look at Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 right quick. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. And that means everybody. So sin is the problem, but Jesus is the solution. Amen. Sin separates, but Jesus brings us back to God because he died for us and he rose again. Well, I'm out of time right now, but I'm going to share a song with you right now. And I'll be back in a few moments to pray with you. Stay tuned. When God dipped his pen, I love my soul a message He wants me to know His Spirit holy fire Fill this sinful soul of mine When God dipped His love in my heart Will the Spirit of wood tend to a living soul How He brought salvation and He made me whole But found a good hide such love Jesus did it all. Well, it makes me laugh and it makes me cry. Sets my sinful soul on fire. When God dips his love in my heart. Even though the way seems dreary, dark, and cold. And some old burden sorrow tries to keep me. His love in my heart will 
Praise the Lord, friend. I hope you've enjoyed that song. We're talking about the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we receive what Jesus has done for us, then his love is part of it. His love is shed abroad in our hearts, and we become new creatures in Christ Jesus. If you've never made that important step to accept Jesus into your life, oh, friend, I want to encourage you to do so right now. That's what this program is all about, because statistics tell us there are many people watching and listening. They've never made that step to invite Jesus into their heart and life. Maybe the Lord's moving upon you right now to do that very thing, just like I did many years ago. You can do the same thing. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for my sin and the way that I've lived, and I want to surrender my life to you. I believe that Jesus died for my sin. He was buried, and he rose again. And he lives today, and he offers me eternal life, and I receive that. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me now, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Friend, I want you to know the Bible says that if you do what you just did, then you become a born-again child of God. That's right, a citizen of God's kingdom. The Bible says that all you have to do is believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's, it's so simple, friend. And uh, there's a, a lot of added things about it that we, we need to understand and learn as we grow in the Lord. And that's why I want to send you this, this brand new little book. If you prayed that for your first time, it's entitled, Now What? Now that you've prayed, now what do you do? Well, you need to read your Bible. You need to learn to pray. You need to learn how to grow in the Lord and just learn about your Heavenly Father and develop a relationship with it, with Him. And this will help you do that. So call me today at 888-429-2280 and get this little book free, no cost or obligation, entitled Now What? Once again, 888-429-2280. If I'm not in the office when you call, just leave your, uh, your name and your message. Say, I prayed with Brother Mike to receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. And if you want to just leave your address, you can do that as well. And I'm still offering uh, my teaching CD entitled Forgiven Forever. We also have it on DVD for your gift of any amount to the ministry because this has a lot of the same scriptures I've been sharing with you today on the subject of the gospel. What does the gospel mean? And this one is entitled Forgiven Forever. So call today for your gift of any amount to the ministry. We'll send this to you. Call us at 888-429-2280. And uh, we're headed toward uh, what folks call Halloween. And so sometime back I did a teaching on the roots of Halloween. And so if you've never had a teaching on that, you might would like to get that. So we're making this available for a gift of $15 or more to the ministry. It's entitled Halloween Exposed. So if you would like to know the roots of this, uh, this holiday, as it's been called, but it's a pagan holiday. So if you want to get more information about it, then get this teaching. 888-429-2280 is that number. And uh, if you'd like more information about it, of course, you can, you can uh, call and ask as well. Halloween Exposed. And hey, don't forget about our next concert coming up right here at the Good News Fellowship Church in Tickball, Louisiana, where I pastor. We have a concert the first Friday of every month. And we got folks from all around the country that comes out. And because we just have all evening gospel music, good food, and good fellowship, and our next special guest will be the Revelations from the state of Mississippi. I'll be singing as well, and my good friend Glenn Fendelson will be here November the 6th. Be sure and put that on your calendar now for November the 6th, and we get started at 6.30 p.m. The Revelations will bless your heart tremendously. We have them here with just about every year, and I know that you will be blessed. And hey, don't forget that we're on YouTube so be sure and subscribe to our YouTube page. Go on there and watch the previously aired programs. 
because I know a lot of times, you know, folks uh, uh, happen to miss the program on radio or television. Well, you can log on to the YouTube uh, page and just watch it on their own demand. That way you can watch it, as I said, any time that you want to. And uh, while you're on the Internet, be sure and follow us on Facebook. We have several Facebook pages. And uh, we have the Mike Vaughn Ministry page and the the uh, music page and the Mike Vaughn page. And we just try to put posts on there that are encouraging different scriptures and videos and what have you. So be sure and, uh, and like our page as well. And uh, I hope you'll do that. And I always like to say a special thanks to my friends and partners for making this outreach possible. We cannot do what we do without you. Partners, you are so special to us because of your prayers and your financial support. We do appreciate you so very much. Well, I'm out of time now, but thank you so much for tuning in today. And I'll see you next time right here on the Good News Program. I appreciate your interest in my songs and music. If you would like more information concerning my music or preaching CDs, you can write and request a product list. Send all correspondence to Mike Vaughn Ministries, Post Office Box 550, Tickfall, Louisiana, 70466. Or email us at mvmgoodnews at aol.com. And our website is mvmgoodnews.com. for sharing this time with us today. We hope you have been blessed and encouraged. Remember, this program is brought to you by our friends and partners. Pray and ask God what you can do to help us spread the good news. Well,